Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use components to create this dashboard UI. Let's get started. So I have already gone ahead and created this UI just using some text layers and some rectangles. If you'd like to follow along, you can pause the video and go ahead and recreate this. The one thing I haven't created is a switch that we'll use to toggle off include rebounds. So we'll create a rectangle layer and make it a bit smaller because this is a web or desktop app. So the switch can be small enough for a mouse. And then we'll turn up the radius for the handle, we'll make it white, and give it a shadow. Now I'm just going to duplicate this layer with Command D and select the lower one. And we can now resize this. And I'll turn off the shadow, give it a gray fill, and that's the off state for our switch. Now without components, it could be a little complex to create the switch. You would have to add a new tap event, create an entirely new artboard, make the switch on, and you know go from there. And if you change anything on one artboard, you'd have to change it on the other. But components make all of this much easier. So I'll just undo all that work. And we're going to turn these two layers into a component. So I'll just select both of them by clicking them while holding shift. And in principle 2.0, we have this com create component button. So I'll click that and you'll see the two layers that we selected are brought into this new view where we only have those layers. And we can go back to the parent by clicking this button and you'll see it in context again. You can see on the left, it's been turned into a single component layer. If you ever do this by accident, you can just go up to arrange and do detach component it turns it back into a normal group with the layers that you have. But in this case, we actually do want a component. So I'll select them, click Create Component again. So let's get started in making this an interactive element. So I'm just going to drag from the lightning button to the current artboard, which will duplicate it. We'll move the handle over. We will turn up the stroke all the way and make the stroke green. And that's our on switch. So we can click this now and turn it on. Now, if you don't know this, you can go up to view and click toggle preview cursor. Since this is a web or desktop design we're doing, we'd like to have a mouse cursor in this view. So we have turning the switch on and we'll add another event to turn it back off. So now you can toggle. Now, if we go back to the parent, everything here is as it was, except in the preview, the switch works like you would expect. So this is the power of components. You can add a lot of complexity without creating a lot of duplicate work. And if you just alt drag on the switch, you can have as many switches as you want and they can all turn on and off independently of each other. So that's where components come in real handy. You can create an entire UI library with your team and reuse these things without having to recreate them. Now you can also use components for kind of larger interactive areas that are part of maybe a larger design. So we'll do that here with the graph. I'm just going to select everything, deselect the switch and include rebounds. So we have the graph and then the text up here. And I'm going to turn this into a component. So by default, when you create a component, the artboard has a clear fill. And this is just so that in the context that you're using it, you can see the parent's background color. If you want to change this, you can edit the component and change the artboard fill if you like. But here we're going to stick with transparent. So with this, we're going to make it so clicking comments will change the graph to show you how many comments you're getting for each picture or post or whatever. So we'll click this. We'll go in and make sure that this layer moves under the comments and just resize it so it fits the text width. And I'm just going to kind of randomly change the height of these bars to make it seem like we're getting different data for the number of comments. And just whatever looks good. And then we'll just add a tap event from likes back. So we can try this out up here. So now we have our two different data sets that we switch between. And if we go back to parent, we can try this out in context. See, so we can change the graph and we can still toggle the switch independently of each other. 
So you can start to see now how components allow you to create some really complex things without requiring a lot of work. Now, it gets even better because if we save this design, let's put it on the desktop and just name it graph. We'll save this and let's say another designer on your team has already created a larger part of this design and we wanna bring in our new graph element. So here you can see this is a, a larger dashboard design and it already has a lot of stuff here, which I'll show you in a minute. But here on the, the graph tab, we actually haven't finished that UI. So that's where our work comes in. So I'm just gonna double click on the component group to enter the component. And then here you can see that this area has been left blank for our work. So I'll just drag in the graph file that we created a minute ago and place it where it needs to be. And we can look in the preview up here and see that it works just like it did before, except now it's in the context of the rest of the UI that was created by our other team member. But let's look at the entire app. So I'll click back to parent to go back out. And we can see what all is created here. And there's a lot going on because components enable a lot of power. So you can see here, we have this trending number changing as if this is real data coming in. Uh, we have this favorites tab that you can scroll through these pictures and see your favorite photos. This heart is a component. So it has this nice animation when you favorite. And this is the graph UI we created earlier. And up here we have a component that will show us our notification. And if you go away from it and wait a moment, the notification will come back. So this kind of simulates um, things happening outside of the design and notifying you. So components can be used for a wide variety of things. Anything from these auto animations here that go by themselves. You can make pop-up menus that get larger than their original size, uh, all the way to tabs that allow you to create a really large app. And it's worth noting that all of this is taking place on a single artboard. So you don't have an enormous tangle of events up here. It's all self-contained here. You can see exactly where the components are and go into them and see how they work. So you can create some really powerful things here without getting into a mess. So that's just the intro to components. There's a ton more you can do with them and we can't wait to see how you'll use them.